This video will briefly describe the production of this large Dizzy Bowl vase. This is by far the largest and most complex Dizzy Bowl pattern project I've completed to date. I spent a total of 12 weeks working on this project, and I estimated that I spent between 350 and 400 hours to complete it. The vase is 24 inches tall, it's 14 inches wide at the rim, and 12 inches wide at the largest Dizzy pattern section of the vase. Fifteen different varieties of wood of various contrast and colors were used in this project to produce these laminated discs. All the woods used in this project are natural colors. No dyes or tints were used in any of the woods. I began this project by slicing 15 inch strips of wood of various thicknesses from 40 thousandths up to 200 thousandths inch thick on the bandsaw. These laminated strips were then glued together to produce eight laminated boards. Each of these laminated boards was 12 inches wide by 1 and 3 quarter inches thick and was comprised of 150 pieces of wood. From these laminated boards I then cut out some laminated disc and then each of these laminated discs was sliced once again on the bandsaw to produce each of my thin laminated discs. Each of these laminated discs is 100 thousandths of an inch thick again 12 inches in diameter and is comprised of 150 pieces of wood. Then a total of 230 of these laminated discs were used to complete the project. The next step is after these uh, boards were sliced into these thin layers, a sets of five of these were glued together to produce my laminated disc sets. And then these laminated disc sets of five discs were then glued together to produce the overall project. I estimate that with the exposure of the two sides of this uh, disc on the outer surface of this project, the disc equates to about 60,000 pieces of wood that are exposed on the outer surface of this uh, large dizzy vase. To establish the top and bottom of the vase and to give it some contrast, I made two layer alternating uh, walnut uh, segmented disc. Uh, each of these discs is 48 segments per rent. Due to the large size of this project, the number of layers and the amount of cutting that was done on the bandsaw, I estimate that about 75% of the wood I started out with ended up as sawdust. This video will briefly describe the production of this large double dizzy bowl vase. It was a very long and time consuming process to produce this vase, which took me more than 12 weeks to complete. I recorded more than 70 hours of videos during the production of this project. This video is a very short synopsis of those steps involved in the production of this double dizzy bowl vase. For those of you interested in additional details on the steps used in the production of this vase, there are two additional longer videos which will describe all the steps used to produce this vase in much more detail. For the most part I followed the same procedures that I used to produce my smaller Dizzy Bowl projects, which are described in some of my previous videos. However, due to the large size of this vase, as well as lessons I learned as production of those previous projects and some new ideas, I did make a number of changes in the methods and procedures that I used for this project. These two more detailed videos will describe in greater detail all the change and improved procedures that I use in this project. Please check out these two accessory videos as well as my previous videos on the Dizzy Bowl and Dizzy Egg projects which are listed on our website as well as on YouTube. I began by designing the project in the Woodturner Pro software package to design the actual shape of the vase, its total height and width, and a number of layers of discs that would be required to complete this project. Each of the layers shown here is actually comprised of five of the 100,000 inch thick laminated disc. Finally, the software is used to determine the inside and outside diameters of each of the disc layers. Fifteen different wood species of varying contrasts and colors were selected for this project. All the wood boards were of natural color. No dyes were used for any of the woods. Each of the wood boards was then sliced to various thicknesses from 40 thousandths up to 200 thousandths thick using the AccuSlice system. Over a period of two weeks, a total of 1,500 strips of wood of the various woods were sliced.
The slice boards of identical thickness and species were grouped together and labeled to begin the assembly of the laminated boards. From the cut strips, boards were then assembled into a pattern to produce a board that was 12 inches wide by 1.75 inches thick by 32 inches long. Each board was comprised of 149 wood strips in a symmetrical pattern. The pattern was determined by placing boards next to each other and then selecting the adjacent boards of a contrasting color or shade. The thicker boards were used in the center portion of the board and the thinner strips were used on the outside layers. Eight identical boards were assembled in this manner. Uh, the gluing is up in three sections. Each section containing between 40 and 50 pieces of wood. And then when these are all glued up and dried, I'll combine the three together to make one big board. When the board is done, it looks like this. This is my finished board containing 149 pieces of wood. And then I ran it through my joiner and planer to clean it up. And now this is ready to cut my disc out to start my Disney Bowl project. Now this is the result of five weeks of work, uh, three weeks of cutting all the boards, and then two weeks of gluing them up. And then I sanded all the surfaces so they're all perfectly flat, so these boards line up exactly, all of them. Now I'm ready to cut my disc and start gluing up the disc and rotating each layer as I glue them up. From these eight laminated boards, round discs of between 10 and 12 inches of diameter were cut on the bandsaw. The discs were then sanded perfectly round on the edge sander by sanding to the marked circle line. Now I've cut and sanded all my discs uh, actually, I have a total of 25 discs I cut and sanded it perfectly round. And as you can see, the patterns line up here exactly from board to board. So these are all set now. The next step is to start segmenting these into individual layers. Uh, I'll be making a disc 100 thousandths of an inch thick. And I should have about uh, probably about 200 for this project. After these discs were cut and rounded and sanded, I did glue them to a three-quarter inch piece of MDF. And because of the size of this board, I did go to a sixteenth per inch blade. I'm cutting a 12 inch diameter disc with the AccuSlice system on the bandsaw. The AccuSlice system is able to cut these perfectly flat 12 inch diameter disc, 100 thousandths inch thick. This did require a 6 teeth per inch bandsaw blade due to the thickness of the board that I am cutting, and the cutting was quite slow. The bandsaw life was greatly reduced due to all the epoxy glue used to glue the laminated boards. I replaced the bandsaw blade after cutting about 10 of the 12 inch diameter laminated disc. However, blade life was slightly longer for the smaller diameter disc. Now I finished cutting all my layer disc for this project. I ended up with about 240 discs going from a 12 inch diameter disc at the bottom here following up to the six and a half inch disc here. And of course out of some of these bigger ones I'll get a smaller disc out of the center. So I'll probably get you know maybe over 300 discs by the time I'm done. Uh, most of these discs will be used for this large base project but there'll be many left, discs left over for another project. I do have a, a spare disc just in case I need some additional pieces and I have another piece of wood also that I can uh, use for a smaller disc. One of the first things I do before I start gluing up my disc to make my segmented uh, bowls is I need to determine the angle of rotation of each disc. And I made a, a template that I showed in my previous video and I kind of settled on two degrees as the best angle for this project. Now this is my new glue up jigs I'll be using. If you've seen in my previous video, I was using some eight penny nails to make you know, a holder to hold these discs as I glue them up. 
but now I'm using some quarter inch diameter tins. Uh, these are much stronger and I can get a higher glue up and less uh, shifting of the disc as I glue it up. So now I'm ready to start gluing these discs up. I'll be gluing these up in sets of five discs. Each of the discs were then glued together in sets of five discs using Type On 2 glue. Each disc was rotated two degrees between each subsequent disc which will produce the desired pattern for this project. After gluing each set of five discs, they were clamped together and allowed to dry overnight. This process was continued until all the discs had been glued. Okay, on a number of these discs, I'm cutting out the center section. Uh, for two purposes. One, to minimize the amount of cutting I'm going to be cutting with on the lathe, and two, I can use these pieces over on the other projects. So I've drawn a line the size of the hole I want to cut, and now I'm just drilling a pilot hole for the uh, The center section of the disc set is cut out on a scroll saw with a 14 teeth per inch scroll saw blade. This is the assembly for my large dizzy vase, which was made according to the plan that I put together in the uh, Woodturner Pro software. And again, I started out with these layered discs, each disc containing about 150 layers of wood. Then I cut these discs to different diameters and glued them up in sets of five. So each of these is a set of five discs. And then uh, a couple of these, like this here, is actually a, a set of 20 discs because they're all the same size. Uh, so the next step is to start gluing these se sections up and turning it in the lathe. I have two more components to make for this assembly. I have a top ring and a bottom ring, which will be probably a segmented uh, walnut ring, 48 segments per ring. So now I'm ready to start assembling these different uh, layers, gluing more, more layers together, and then putting these in the lathe and start turning. I assembled the first 60 layers of, of disc and glued them all together in one big assembly here. Then I attached this to a, a face plate. My face plate's an 8 inch face plate with a cherry uh, board here, backing, and everything is glued to that. Uh, and I'll be attaching this in sections. In other words, the next section here is another what, 20, more, 20 more layers. And I'm usually gluing these together on a disc of between 10 and, and 20 or maybe 30 layers and then I'll be gluing this up. And I do that by attaching it to my Longworth chuck and then gluing it in place. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start turning this. I'm going to be turning this in sections as I go down because I have a lot of weight on here and I'm a little concerned about uh, turning this going forward. So I want to turn it in sections. Each section I'll turn and then just keep adding sections till it's done. The process was continued, gluing each set of 5 to 30 discs onto the assembly on the lathe. Each set of glued discs was allowed to dry on the lathe overnight. The discs were then turned on the lathe according to the dimensions on the project plan. After the subsequent disc layers had been each added, I then to go back to the previous layers to finalize the overall shape of the vase. After about 100 layers had been assembled, I then started to also turn the inside of the vase. It's much easier to turn the inside of the vase before it gets too large. I also sand up both the inside and outside sections of the vase at the various stages of turning, starting with 100 grit sandpaper down to 400 grit. After about 120 layers had been added, I installed a Carter Steady Rest to give the vase some additional support as it was being turned. The process was continued until all layers had been added turned and sand it. Finally I added a double layer of segmented rings to the top of the vase. 
The segment at ring was comprised of 48 segments per ring and was made of walnut. This was then turned and sanded. I applied finish to the vase on a lathe, both the inside and out. I started out with several coats of shellac and then finished with about 10 coats of wipe on polyurethane finish, allowing each layer to dry several hours before the next coat was applied. The vase was then parted off on the lathe. I started by using a parting tool to cut about halfway through the base on the lathe. However, due to the size and weight of this project, I did the final parting off with a handsaw. Finally, I made another walnut double layer segment at ring with 48 segments per ring for the base of the vase to match the double segment at walnut ring on the top of the vase. This was turned on the lathe, sanded and finished with polyurethane. This concludes the short summary of how this double dizzy bowl vase was made. I was able to condense 12 weeks of work and about 70 hours of video into this 15 minute summary. I do want to thank Scott Grove for inspiring me to produce this project. This is the most complex lathe project that I have completed to date. It taxed both my time commitment, the capacity of my lathe, and it totally depleted my inventory of wood. 